going on guys? Snag here and it's time to wrap up round four of the 2024 NRL season and man this was a cracking weekend of football. Five days of rugby league. How good man. It was uh, brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Now let me know how you went on the punt this weekend guys. If you hit anything big drop it in the comments. I'd love to see it because I didn't hit much this weekend so I want to live vicariously through you. Let us know how you did with the tips as well guys. Five from eight, three from eight, whatever you did sort of thing. I was disgusting. I'm ashamed with myself with the tips this weekend. I was ashamed. I was absolutely ashamed. And on the punt too, to be fair. Hit a couple, hit hit one today, but yeah, it was a skinny round. It was a skinny round. I was actually chatting to a mate that works with, um, which one does he work at? Ladbrokes. And he said the NRL has been highly profitable this year. Not from me, from everyone. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's been a skinny year. It all, it's always hard at the start. I remember last year, so I've been uh, picking for about three years now. I'm putting them on TikTok and stuff. and um, Actually, two and a half. So I started halfway through a year, and I just blitzed it. And that's sort of how I got a big following on TikTok. And then um, the next year, which was last year, I was starting real bad. I'm like, oh, man, maybe I was just fluking it. Like Maybe I was just, maybe I can't do this anymore. And then it come good again, and we killed it at the end of the year again. So the start of the year is always hard, guys. Don't get discouraged. And remember, always gamble responsibly, unless you're me. So I love gambling irresponsibly. Actually, I think I'm one of the most responsible gamblers there is. You don't see me putting stupid punts down too often. I just don't hit all the time. All right, guys, let's go through this. Let's go through every game real quick now, and we'll also have a quick look at the ladder. Roosters, close, but no cigar against the Penrith Panthers, 16-22. to Rabbitohs get it done against the Bulldogs, 20-16. to Broncos get it done against the Cowboys 38-12. I was actually at this game, guys. I'm going to talk about this game in a, a little bit different to what I normally do because I was there in person. I was actually in a corporate box for this one. And, um, yeah, I've got some takes on this one that are a little bit different than I normally do. Uh, Dragons get it done against the Seagulls. You can see why not many people got much right this weekend. Uh, Dolphins skill the, West, uh, the Titans 30-14. to Warriors defeat the Knights 20-12. to Sharkies... This, I can't wait to talk about this game. Skittle, the West... Uh, the, what do I keep going to say? The West Tigers. Uh, the Raiders, 22. 36-22. Uh, and the Eels lose to the West Tigers by 1.16 to 17. Let's have a look at the ladder. Dolphs on top. However, they do only have two wins. Don't forget they had a bye, guys. And then we have Panthers... Cowboys, Sharks, Storm, and West Tigers all on six points. The Tigers have had a bye too, though. Have they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they have. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, looking pretty crazy, this top eight. Very different to how we would have thought. Um, if we had to do, like, a power rankings, I do think Penrith have been the best team this year. Um, I mean, even look at look Cowboys, who are just below them. I mean, can, Penrith conceded 54. They conceded 100 in the same amount of wins and losses, you know what I mean? So definitely um, this will shake out a little bit in the next, you know, sort of five weeks. Um, we'll definitely see a different look in top eight, I dare say, but man, you can't knock the game, you can't knock the game. There's a lot of heavyweights outside of the top eight, Waz, Eels, Seagulls, Broncos, and Rabbitohs, all not in the top eight. Absolutely crazy, and Titans way down the bottom there, and I think they're almost a lock for the wooden spoon at the moment, unfortunately. Mm. Absolutely crazy. But yeah, um, these are the games here too, so this is who everyone's playing next week. However, we will um, we will have a look at next week's games at the end of this video, guys. All right, so on to the Roosters versus the Penrith Panthers. No Cleary, no Fish, no Sorensen, no Worries. And um, they're just so good, man. I said this about the Broncos the week before when they were missing a couple, when they were missing Reynolds. They didn't look like the Broncos. and I, Never more evident. I mean, like, they didn't look the same as the Broncos did when they are at their full strength. I mean, at their height of their powers. And Penrith just look... They just, I know they're not quite as polished, but they just still look like the Penrith Panthers when Clear is not in that team, when Fish isn't in that team. And it was just something special, man. It was... It was crazy. I was loving these centre matchups. These Tungo and Maeve versus Manu and Suali'i. Um, absolutely awesome. I thought Schneider was great. Lua looked nice, skipping around. He actually looked pretty damn good. Uh, Moses Leoda, which I want to get to in a second, um, was great. Um, and this Lindsay Smith dude, man. We'll get to his... 
I, I, then, I think he played 70 minutes in the middle and just looked great. And I made this comparison before, and uh, let me know what you think about it. I feel like he's a little bit like... Um, you know, like, for example, who he's sort of replacing, Spencer Lino, highly athletic, explosive, you know, blah, blah, blah. I feel like Lindsey Smith is sort of more like um, Jake Tarojevic. Like, first time I saw him, like, first time I saw um, Jake Tarojevic, you know, you don't think much of him. Not a fast twitch muscle fibre in his body. But he just, he gets through the work. He doesn't get smashed on offence when he's carrying the ball. He, you know, he can get hit a little bit, but nothing crazy. And then he just stops blokes in their tracks, and he's got a mad motor. It's it's crazy. It's it's crazy. It's a little bit of a yeah younger version of of Gerbo. It's it's pretty crazy, man. Um, Lee Martin went off early as well. That that made this even more special. It was just like, I know he ended up coming on later, but it still you know that still throws off your your interchanges and all that sort of stuff. And it, it just didn't miss a beat, man. It was. Eisenhower, this Liam Henry guy looks like a goer, and shout out to Maverick guy for having a run, uh, for getting his first run as well. He looks great, and um, yeah, it was just a little bit of a funny one. They just didn't really fire a shot. Um, I'll get to this, and actually, I'll get to this. So the first half for me, right? The halftime stats: Roosters had run for 480 meters, Panthers had run for 800. Now that that's crazy. But what makes it crazier is, because stats happen like this sometimes, a few line breaks, stuff like that, there was no line breaks. That's just contact on contact. They just pummeled, absolutely pummeled the Roosters. And absolutely, they restricted to, they restricted every single back under 50. So last week, Dom Young, who ran for just a stupid amount of metres, I think he ended up with okay stats in the end. But um, in the first half, had 50 metres. So yeah, he ended up with 160. Um, Dom Young ended up... Oh, it's still yeah, Dom Young, who only ended up with 87. They kicked a two-piece side a little bit more in the second half, so he ended up with a bunch of metres. But um, it was just... It was an absolute masterclass, man. I've, I wish there was a stat... You know how we have the post-contact stat? I wish there was like a, a post-contact, like a reverse post-contact stat. Because Penrith, or the players in Penrith's middle, would just, just destroy this one. The amount of times they hit, grab, and drag back five metres is just insane. Like... If that was a stat, I'm telling you now, like your, your Moses, your Moses Leotas, your Fishers, your Isaiah Yo, stuff like that, they, they would just be leading this thing every week because, again, it's something that doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but it's just insane. Like, they, they take away so many metres. Like, the amount of metres Dom Young lost was just crazy, absolutely crazy. I, hopefully one day they do that stat because it's pretty important, man. Like, if you can take four metres off someone, put them on their back and slow the play of the ball down... That's better than five post-contact metres. Yet all everyone's like, oh, look how many post-contact metres so-and-so got. It's like, bro, Moses stopped fucking 80. You know what I mean? Like, Moses Leota took 80 metres off them. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that'd be cool. But yeah, that the damage is really done here. This score does look pretty good, but I people were saying, oh, they got robbed because robbed of that try. And I, they, yeah, I, I agree. Like, the try was trash. But... Um, that that what that obstruction they took off like people like yeah but the Dylan yeah that was wrong too I mean that was right you know what I mean so Penrith were the better team for 60 65 minutes um I just I don't want to sit here and like everyone just wants to talk about refs I just I want to talk footy man I want to talk footy I want to talk about good performances I want to talk about who did what great I don't want to sit here and talk about the refs I'm sick of it 90 percent of these calls. This one did actually have a little impact on the game. But 80% of these calls people are complaining about, it wouldn't have impacted the game. They're talking about them and it's like, bro, they were down by 18. There was 10 minutes to go. Like, just shut up. Like, just move on. But anyway, I'm talking footy. I don't talk about refs. Um, but yeah, Penrith were the better team for the majority of it. You know, like I said, ref did mess up a little bit there and rob us of a real close game. But if we... Look at the stats, I mean, 1,700 to 1,300 metres, post-contact 617 to 485, tackle breaks pretty similar, 33 to 31, but this is, that's what's crazy, three line breaks each, and look at these extra metres for only, it's pretty insane, man, that's absolutely ridiculous, offloads 10 to 8, um, what else we got here, tackle efficiency, not too great from Penrith, they're usually a bit higher than that, uh, missed tackles 31 to 33, um, negative plays tended um, so they weren't weren't I, I didn't think Roosters were that great man and I, I just I just I just watching it 
the better team won and I thought they should have won. That That is just, forget the scores, that's just sort of what I got from it. But Roosters will be just fine. They were missing players too. Let's not forget that either. Everyone was talking about Cleary being out. They were missing a couple of forwards as well. So um, Roosters will be just fine. I think they're, they're a gun team and they're dead set look like a top four team. But I tell you what, the price of Penrith winning the comp for me just keeps getting shorter and shorter and shorter. They're just looking... Scary. Um, and Nathan Cleary apparently back. He's going to have next week off. Apparently he's good to play next week, but they just thought one extra week off, then they have a bye, come back fresh the week after. I'm not too sure who they're playing then, but I wouldn't want to be playing them. Put it this way, let's have a quick look. So the Penrith have... And then they've got the bye, so it'll be round seven. He'll be back. Oh, the West Tigers. <laughs> Yuck. Yuck. Oh, let's go back here. Um... Yeah, it's pretty nuts. All right, Bulldogs, Rabbitohs. Now, I can't really talk too much about this game just because I was going to the Broncos game and obviously you had to get an Uber there and stuff. So I watched the first half here. I was watching on my computer, watched it pretty closely, caught an Uber there. Then we watched it out the front of the Broncos before the gates opened to let us in. And um, they've got a big screen there. And um, But you know what it's like. There's someone there chatting to you. You're sort of only half watching and all that sort of stuff. But... Um, so this will be a pretty crap, what I'm trying to say is this will be a pretty crap review. I'll just tell tell you what I saw and move on to the next game because, yeah, I didn't really get to see it properly. Um, Tom Burgess at the start was absolutely brilliant. I thought he was great. Um, he should have he been starting this whole time. I mean, similar to Papali'i, just he's not going to let you down. You know what I mean? Just because he might not be the quite the standard of some of the top front rollers going around now. He's been there, done that. He's big, he's strong. He's not going to let you down. He comes on, looked so strong through the middle and then runs a great line and scores a try. So he has to start for me. I, th I should, thought he should have been starting this whole time. Um, and then, yeah, the game itself, Jack White looked good. I mean, Connor Tracy looked great as well. Um, so we had tries to Tom Burgess, Jack White got two, Burton got one, Connor Tracy got two. Um, but the game itself, I mean, it just it, it it was a good game. Like it was nice. It was nail biter down to the wire. Both teams to me just just looked just watching it just looked like fringe top eight teams. It didn't wasn't super super high standard. Um, but one thing I like about the Bulldogs is. They were, they were hunting in packs, you know what I mean? They're in defence, you know what I mean? Hunting in packs, they're not the biggest team, they're not the strongest team, but they just, everything, you know, looked relatively together in defence, which is good, heaps of effort. Um, they look like a team that cares, they look strong. Um... But yeah, they're just, they're just so skinny in the middle. Like, they, they will just get, they will get skittled by big teams, that are running hot, if that makes sense. Like, if they come up against Penrith full strength, like, they will roll through their middle. Like, yeah, you put four bodies on fish or something, and then the next next runs Moses, and then your next runs your next runs Isaiah. Yo, uh, you, you're done. But they look good, man. I, 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 I bagged the Bulldogs. Well, I'll bag any team if they're bad, and I don't think they're bad. I just think they're just not quite, don't quite have the roster to make a genuine top eight run, but they look like a team that could f fight for it, I guess you could sort of say, but a few injuries now starting to set in. Um, obviously, Jacob Preston broke his jaw. It looks like, who was out again? Um, Addo Carr's going to miss at least a week with that head knock, and uh, Curtis, Curtis Moran's going to get, I think they said two to three weeks. So I'd say it's three, but if he fights it, if he chooses to fight it, um, and then two if he doesn't. So that's a little bit of a concern. Um, Samuel Hughes has been used sparingly lately, um, which is a bit odd. I thought he looked pretty nice. And Josh Curran's been nice as well. Um, but yeah, Billy Army's kick chase has been absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, but let's have a look at these team stats because I didn't really get to have a look at these just because obviously I've been, been having... Wow, look at that completion rate from the bunnies. 94%, wow. Um, from what I saw, again, like I said, I wasn't watching it like a hawk, but, yeah, the error, handling errors were pretty bad for the doggies. Um, but look, look at this, man. Winning winning the meters battle. This didn't happen last year. This didn't happen last year. 
Even winning the post-contact. I mean, that's great. Five line breaks to six. I felt like Bunnies, just, just looking at it, how I was sort of half-watching it, the Bunnies' defense didn't look good, but their scramble defense looked pretty good, um, which is good. Um, what else we got here? Kick defusals, 100%. Wow. How's the offloads? Eight each. Tackle efficiency, 90%. So Bunnies on paper look... Their numbers are brilliant, but when I was watching them, they didn't look that brilliant. Um, but yeah, this is hard to win games with the with these numbers here. But yeah, it's a, like I said, it was it was a gutsy performance from both teams, really. And Jason Demetrio lives to fight another day. Mm. So glass half full with the glass half full with the doggies because uh, I am, I'm really I'm sort of teetering on that. I don't know whether I'm glass half full or glass half empty with them. Glass half full, tons of effort. Looks like, you know, everyone's saying, you know, you guys, like, they're getting a lot of pats on the back. Actually, I'll, I'll say that, like, I watched I watched Ricky Stewart's post-press conference and he said, uh, he was he was just, he's ripped his boys into it. Like, he was like, not good enough. They don't don't give him a, he, who were they talking about, Talao or something? Tomoko? And he said, don't give him a rap. None of, the, no, none of my boys deserved a rap today. Where in a loss, you know what I mean? Like, he's expecting to win, whereas then Serraldo's sort of like, yeah, you know, trying to find positives. You know what I mean? So it's sort of, that's that can be good, but sometimes you need to be told, like, yeah, we're looking better, but it lose, we're still losing games. We're still one and three. So you got to, it's walking that fine line where it's like, oh, because another loss or two, and then let's say they do lose another play to injury or something, all of a sudden you're like one and five, and you're down, say, or Villiam kick hours out for four weeks now. All of a sudden, now you're now you're in spoon contention all of a sudden. So it's this fine line for the doggies where it's like, yeah, like they're looking better, but like, yeah, they're still one and three, you know? So um, they really need a, just a couple of wins to sort of quiet all that down. But yeah, who, who have they got next? Let's have a quick look. Um, doggies, Roosters. <sighs> See what I mean? They could be one and four. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. But yeah, no. Look, I, I was I was pretty happy with them. If if Bulldogs jag this win, they're f Roosters coming off a loss too. It's going to be tough. All right, Broncos Cowboys. Now, like I said, guys, I was at this game, so I didn't get a proper look at the game. Like you, you, you get a much better view of rugby league from home, and that's why NRL TV viewership so high. <laughs> it's it's actually sort of a better game watch at TV. However. I did watch this at a corporate box. I was in the chairman's lounge, actually. If you want to see, I put up a video on TikTok, um, like my experience there, like just showing everyone. I was in the chairman's lounge, which is like the CEOs and the, all the chairmen are up there. So I got an invite for that. Me and the family went down for that. And, um, mate, it was... Shout out to the Broncos. Shout out to the CEO, Dave, for that experience. Um, it was special, man. Like we went in, rolled out the red carpet, unlimited drinks, like crazy food like prawns and like like just like it was nuts man like i was sitting there just eating sliders just had my own waiter hey bring me just smashing bundies and like everyone i don't know everyone in there but they're all pretty heavy i'm pretty sure i was a brokers dude in there if that well oh, there was a couple nrl players so marty to was in there and matt Gillette. i probably probably got those guys covered financially but no one else everyone was uh yeah they were big big wigs in there and um it was just such a good experience. Broncos in general, like I'm not a Broncos fan, but Broncos are doing such a good job, man. Like make sure you go out and support that team. They deserve it. Like the stuff they're doing, like the halftime shows, the pregame shows, the, the the energy was just crazy in that place. So yeah, shout out to the Broncos for that and letting me and my family come watch that. Now I tipped Cowboys in this game and then when I walked into the skybox, got myself a Bundy, went to go have a look at the view. Open the door, it's raining. I was like, oh, Broncos are going to win this for sure. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. I was uh, sitting next to Carl Webb's mum for it as well. It was obviously the Carl Webb tribute game. And even she, what should be in her 70s, she goes, yeah, Broncos going to win. It's raining. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, I was thinking exactly the same thing. I was thinking exactly the same thing. Um, yeah, Renault's boot man was just nuts on this. Like Renault's just he's so class in the wet. He's 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 probably the best wet weather half I've ever seen, eh? Well modern day anyway. Like like he's better than Cleary in the wet. 
Cleary, I think, um, I don't think Cleary changes his game a whole heap. He just tries to play the same. Like Reynolds clearly changes his game and just he just peppers him. Now, I'm going to talk about this game just purely what I saw from sitting up there at that elevation, just looking over the two teams, right? Number one, Cowboys just looked atrocious in the wet. They didn't look, they looked slow. Nothing looked right. And there was two players, I've, I've got to say, I'm pretty disappointed with. I've seen them live, and like I was pretty disappointed with the way they moved. And the first one, even though these guys both got tries, one was Scott Drinkwater. I was not impressed with him live at all. Like he, he did a couple of things. I was like, what the hell are you doing? Like Broncos would have the ball and um, hitting the ball up. And Scott Drinkwater had his back to the play and he's jogging back like for ages. I'm like, turn around, bro. What are you doing? Like you've got to be directing traffic and like, I don't know. I just found it strange. Like even Tristan Saylor had his, like when he'd go back, he'd run backwards and he's, he's directing and all that sort of stuff. That was bizarre to me. And I'll give him a pass just because it was wet. He didn't look that slick sort of thing I was like oh I don't know I just didn't look as nice as I was expecting live like for example the first time I saw um Jared Hayne live like that old what Tupac saying like I move different like Jared Hayne moved different the first time I saw another one's Dylan Brown the way he moves he, he moves different uh Reese Walsh same like when when you're watching Reese Walsh live you're like oh like you you know even if you were squinting your eyes so you couldn't see properly, you'd know when Reese Walsh had the ball compared to everyone else. He moves different. Like, he's just... And Drinky didn't for me. And the other one was, and I know he got try as well, it was Ezra Man. I was like, oh, maybe it was the rain. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But, yeah, Ezra, he, Ezra had a pretty good game. He looked all right, but he didn't... He just looked like a pretty good half. I was expecting that. Just because I think one of the last things tattooed on my brain about Ezra Man is was the grand final when he just shredded everyone apart. Yeah, he just didn't look like that same player to me live. But again, like, just, I'm going to give him a pass. I was just a little bit like, I was so excited, man. I was like, man, I haven't seen Drinky live before. I haven't seen Ezra Man live before. It's going to be sick, man. I can't wait to watch him play. And I was sort of sitting there, and they just looked like every other player. They just looked like good footy players. Um, but yeah, it was an uh, absolute masterclass from Reynolds. And uh, Broncos, I definitely changed my... Broncos are going to be up there this year. Like, I know they're 2-2 two and two now. Um, they're big, athletic, strong. They they move nice. Like I was actually, and just straight up, that was. I said I heard just there was a few other lads in the box talking, and they they were like, "This is the best wet weather footy I've ever seen," you know, from a team. You know what I mean? And it, to score thirty eight points in the in it was pissing down. It was pissing down rain at one point, man. Like um, our box was undercover, so we were sitting outside, but it was undercover. But it, it was like at one point it was like piercing down and um it was pretty crazy but yeah it was good fun to watch man it was really really good i thought the fords were actually pretty decent i actually thought hunt was pretty good and shout out to paddy carrigan for winning the car web medal as well uh xavier looked nice too um i know this is the other one it's so funny because everyone i'm ripping now scored tries i'm pretty sure smoothie scored a try didn't he did he yeah he did score a try um i don't know about this smoothie dude coming on like, I feel like he's too similar to, like, so, you know, like, um, the first ever dual halves combination I remember was Piggy Riddell and, and PJ Marsh. You had your big boxy guys, sort of like, or Penrith, more modern, so people know, um, you know what I mean? Like, Ken, um, Will Kenny will take the middle when the tides, get, Fords get a little tired because he's big, strong. You know, you bring on your, your sh sh crafty little half to do his thing. I feel like Smoothie's just real similar to, to Billy Walters, I don't know. I think I feel like they're wasting a, a bench spot here. Eh? I'd probably put Tristan Saylor or something here for a bit of spark, a bit of utility. Um, over like a got. I know he's fresh when he comes on, but I think I think Billy can play eighty man. Like I don't. You get what I'm saying? I just don't feel like he adds anything. Like I think if you're going to carry a, 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 a like an out and out nine on the bench, I think they have to offer something different to the, your current hooker. <laughs> rather than just come on and just you've got a fresh version of the same guy. I'd rather probably carry some utility on the bench. Um, and shout out to Corey Oates for getting a try as well. Man, Suncourt loved him. When he came on, it was like, I don't know. 
I don't know. But yeah, like I said, I'm not going to talk too much about the Cowboys and their game because they, they, they looked really bad. I Put it this way, if it's raining, I'm betting against the Cowboys this year. They looked terrible. They looked so bad in the wet. Like, uh, I'm surprised they scored 12 points. Mmm. Look at that. And look at that. 82% from the Broncos in the, in the rain. That's absolutely brilliant. And man, Reynolds, I'm telling you, he's the best half in the wet I've ever seen. He was... He, he looked incredible. I thought he probably should have won the Carl Webb medal, to be honest. Um, line breaks 3-2. to two, Post contacts, all pretty similar. Uh, not much else off here. So 11 offloads, Jesus Christ. Not time to be offloading, lads. Um, kick diffuse, 86%. So they actually tackled pretty good. 89% efficiency. Missed tackles, 30-34. to 34. Errors, 16. Whoa. What? Penalties conceded three each, but yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely brilliant masterclass from the Broncos. It was, um, yeah, it was special, man. And yeah, like I said, thanks so much for having us. That was so much fun, man. So much fun. It was, uh, it was actually pretty funny, though. Oh, no, I won't say that story. <laughs> I'll save that one. <laughs> I'll save that one. Dragon Seagulls. Dud game of the weekend. Absolute trash could barely watch it it was such a weird game like turbo was on one for the first 10 minutes did the most hectic pass offload i've ever seen i think he had four maybe even five blokes hanging off him and then after that complete went into his shell just i think he had four errors in the first half absolutely just was ass but he, he just sucked ass the rest of the game it was absolute bizarre man um and just yeah it was just it's just such a weird game like Let's have a look at some of these stats because it, it had to, yeah. This is a dud game of footy. They had 42 sets and only completed 29. That's insane, man. That is absolutely insane. Uh, they ran for more meters. It was just tackle breaks 37 to 27. Where wow. offloads 6 to 12. It was just what have I written down for this one? Oh, so yeah, oh, actually, yeah, I do want to give the Dragons line line defence was absolutely brilliant. Like, I, I was shocked how good, um, I was shocked how good it was. It was really, really good. Like, they mainly didn't look like scoring, and maybe it was them being clunky, I don't know, but I'm going to give the, the Dragons the rap. Like, they looked really good on their own line. It was it was really not, it took Turbo throwing a pass to the gods to crack it, really. It was, um... Yeah, I really rated what they did there, but Dragons weren't great either, but they were better. They were better. I mean, yeah, and it was just one of those games, like, Brooksy was down. Like, even Paseca, I've been talking him up like crazy. Nothing. Croker had a couple errors. I mean, Ola Kawadu got a try, but Tom Travojevic was dropping all. Even Jakey was bad, and... Yeah, I thought, I actually, I, simply, I was, I was really shocked they left him out of the team, and then they obviously brought him in last minute. He actually looked pretty good. I think he's going to add a lot coming off the bench. Um, they needed a bigger body to come in. I, I, like, I just don't rate Bully more that high. Just, I don't know, he's a bit of like the wish version of Jake Tarojevic. Like, he's no frills, but just doesn't, he's just not as good as Jake. <laughs> no, not the wish version, that's a bit mean. Like the Amazon version, you know what I mean? A bit better than wish. But, yeah, I think Simply will add a lot. and They need Saab back. They need some speed. And um, Now, I really liked... I liked Molo, Blake Laurie starting. This looked heaps better. Jacob Little coming in. And I actually really liked DeBellin coming off the bench. He added a lot of spark. He looked good. And Sele coming in as well. Like we said in our pregame, I liked this lineup a lot better. Um, again, not great, but, yeah, they got it done. They got it done. Yeah, Luciano looked good good early. It's a hectic edge that, eh? Luciano. Is it Luciano, Ravalawa, and Suli? Who, running, us, running up to those three. Who do I run at? None. <laughs> oh, we'll have a look at some of the player stats on this one, guys. Um, Zach Lomax is pretty good. 177 metres. Uh, Cole, I thought Cole Flanagan was good. He had two line breaks, two line break assists, one try assist. And who was this? Ben Hunt, one line break assist, three try assists. Wow. Wow. That's pretty damn impressive. Um, Blake Laurie was a little average. I thought Su Luciano was good at the start. But yeah, they've just got to get rid of Zach, man. Like, 
let him go. Let him go. It's a thing in the NBA when players ask out. Like the NBA, like you know, all American sports is a bit ahead of us with everything, obviously. Like they've done studies on it and stuff, and it's just like if a player doesn't want to be there, you're just better off just going, just go. Like I know you've got a contract and you've got to honor your contract, and I'm all for that. Like I, I've no one believes in that more than me, but just cancerous on the team, man. Like these boys all hang out and play video games after, and they're chatting and shit like that. Do you really want a guy? chatting to players that wants to bounce like you know what I mean like you want players that are bought in and want to be there I'm sure Zach will keep turning up but they just to me in my opinion just just go go bro just we'll replace you just beat it and we'll take that 800k for next year you know so yeah that's that's my opinion anyway like if you can get something for him great but yeah it's just it's just one of those ones like it happens in the NBA all the time now when a player asks out they just they're just like yep go like just we don't we don't want people here that don't want to be here mm. but yeah good good game now oh man the top of the table dolphins who would have thunk it how fast has rugby league changed i remember in their first game was it their first game they lost it was i was sitting there going they looked awful like i was like oh jeez they could get the spoon here and then what? Two games later, they're sitting on top of the table. <laughs> uh, so Titans did look pretty early in the, good in this one. The game was a bit of an arms arm wrestle. And it was a bit, um, you know, a bit close. But then there was a sin bin for a hip drop on what was his name again? Max Plath. And, and Dolphins somehow got better from that. And then from, from that moment on, just dominated. I actually thought Jesse Bromwich had some real nice carries. Katoa, one of the best games he's had. Nick Arima was pretty quiet. Bostock, few errors, but looked nice. Herbie got a bit more ball this time. They've got to find a way to get him some more ball, though. Um, Hammersall was actually sort of halfway through this game, even more. I was like, I was sort of sitting there, and I was like, because I'm always thinking, you know, who would I rather, what, who's better than who, and all that sort of stuff. And I'm like, I love Hammer. He's one of my favourite players. But I was sitting there halfway through this game and just thinking about his season so far. And I'm like, would you take King Gutho over him? You know what I mean? Like, obviously, Hammer's ceiling so much higher than King Gutho's. But King Gutho gives you a nine every every week, 8.5. Like, a bad game for Gutho is 8.5. And halfway through this game, I remember just thinking to myself, man, he can really not get involved sometimes, eh? And he was he was catching the ball, standing there waiting for his winger to sort of run around him so he didn't have to take a carry and stuff like that. And I get it. And I think the commentators even said, you know, like, oh, you don't want to beat up the Ferrari and all that stuff. And, yeah, like, that's fine. I get it. I'm sure Wayne's cool with that. But I don't know. I was just sort of sitting there going, oh, would you take a Dylan Edwards who gives you a nine every week? Would you take a gather? And then he just shredded up the last 20 minutes. So I'm like, all right, I'll just shut my mouth then. But <laughs> I'll just sit on, I'll just sit here and eat this humble pie. But um, yeah, I was I was a little. I I just love I love high energy players. Like I, I love my Teddies. I love my I love my Dylan Edwards. I love my Clint's. You know, I love those guys that are in everything sort of thing. And um, you know, like. But again, there's different styles of fullbacks. Just because Teddy's the Australian captain doesn't mean everyone has to play that way. Yeah, Felice was just shooting out of the line. I found it a little strange about, and this is why this is another reason why why we've been struggling a little bit on the punt, guys. The way that the teams are playing this year is absolutely crazy. Like that, dead set. I, I, how many tries? I, I think Mark Nichols has more tries than Jermaine Osako this year. They were running outside insides for props and stuff, and like just short balls for props and stuff like that. The game's way different. I mean, we've got AJ. Has AJ scored a try this year? Like, Hamole scored, like, what, one, maybe, two, maybe? Like, all our try scorers just aren't scoring. They're scoring tries in different ways, and all these guys are getting tries. I should actually look that up. I'll look I'll look that up um, before next week's video, and um, I'll, we'll see who's scoring all the tries, because I'm telling you, man, this year's been real hard to pick tries. And, um, but, yeah, it, you know, Herbie, like, Asako's barely, I think he scored, did he score one in this? No, Herbie got one. Oh, that's right. He set one up for Herbie. Yeah, Josh. Kerr, I think Josh Kerr has more tries than Asako this year. And Bostock's got two. It's absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, just the way the teams are playing this year have been been nuts. Shout out to Philip Sami too, who got hip dropped and then produced this. Where was it? Oops, wrong wrong team. Like, 
Oops, Sami got hip dropped. Was on one foot, scored a try. Whoops. Seventy post contact. Two hundred and twenty nine meters on one leg. Seventy post contact. Two line breaks. Three tackle breaks. That's crazy, man. That's absolutely nuts. Absolutely beast. Um, now look for the Titans as well. I love Jaden Campbell. I just think AJ Brimson's a better fullback. I just he needs more ball. Like it's just it's one of these ones. Sometimes you just have two really good players in your team in the same position, and neither of them can play another position really well. I love Jaden. Like he's great. Jaden is unmatched in broken play. But if we're just talking about fullbacks skill set from top to bottom, AJ is substantially better than Jaden Campbell. Played Origin there, bro. Like, I'm pretty sure he has. Yeah, he has. He's good. He's he's very good. Like I I don't I don't put him quite as high as some of the top fullbacks, obviously. But he's right around there with your Clint's, with your you know those guys. Probably not top three, four, five, but he's he's around there. He's around that fifth, sixth, seventh best fullbacks in the comp. And again, he's played Origin. He's 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 good, man. I was watching him last year, and I, every time he played, I was impressed. I was like, man, this kid's better than I thought he was. And Jaden Campbell is just freaky talent, fleet-footed, but he's also sixty kilos, can get ragdolled. And just I, I don't know. I just it's one of those ones where they just might might have to let Jaden go, or just have him as that fourteen game breaker. I, I don't know, but. To me, AJ has to play in the, at fullback. It's just my opinion, but I, th I think it's correct. I I it's so hard because I fully get it. I fully get it. But like, look at look at Tristan Saylor on the weekend. Like, he's going to go back probably play in reserve grade next weekend. He's he's one hundred percent good enough to play to play first grade every weekend. Doesn't always mean you do. Like, there's guys that play first grade every weekend that probably shouldn't be, but. They're just lucky that there's just a space available. Sometimes there's not. So yeah, um, not great for the, not great for the Titans, and it's looking uh, it's looking scary. So have a look at the meters here, guys. So Dolphins definitely won through the middle, seventeen hundred to fifteen hundred. Seven line breaks to three tackle breaks, thirty nine to the Dolphins, eighteen to the Titans. Average set distance forty six to forty two. Ruck speed foot. Both 3.4. Offloads 12 to 8 to the Dolphins. Uh, what else we got here? Defense 91%. That's very Wayne Bennett to 86. That's great. Missed tackles 18 in the game of rugby league. If that's under 30, you're doing pretty good. If it's under 20, you're doing very good. Very, very good. Uh, 11 errors to 8. Yeah, so good good win from the Dolphins. And man, if they just, they could just. I didn't pick Dolphins in my top eight, but if Dolphins just keep just could just fly under the radar like this, you know, win two games, lose one, win two games, lose one, win two, you do enough of that, all of a sudden you're sitting in fifth and there's five rounds to go. Like that, that's that's what happens, man. People think you have to win so many games to get into the top top. You don't. You actually don't. It's actually pretty nuts. If you start winning games at the start of the year, and you're consistent with it, and you don't go on a skid. You don't actually have to win a whole heap of games. It's it's actually pretty wild. <sighs> Wars Knights. Warriors. We spoke about this in the pregame. I loved RTS going back to fullback. Same back foot four minus the fullback as that took Warriors to the semi final last year. And it just looked so much better. I've said it before. Just I just spoke about... It sounds so harsh. I just spoke about the small fullback. I think it's dead. Fullbacks back in the 80s, 90s were fast, little agile. I think you have to be big now. I just... I think... I mentioned his name or not today. I think Clint Gutherson is about as small as you can be. I really don't think he could be small. I'd even Kalen Ponga looking at this same game. Kalen's put on some weight, and he is substantially better in the fullback role in the last 18 months since he did put on that bit of weight. He looks so much... He pulls through tackles now so much easier. He doesn't get put on his back as much. Way quicker play the balls. Um, and it just suits the way Warriors... Like the amount of... In the first, what, three rounds? The amount of times Tua Picky got grabbed, put on his back, 
held down for a substantial amount of time. The other team could just set their line, next bloke gets bashed. So DWZ or Montoya just gets smashed. This one, Roger goes bang, breaks dude's ankles, smacks through, gets a fast play of the ball, next carries Dallin, bang, next carries Montoya, bang. And it's just like these pistons. And it's just it gets you set off to such a big start, which allows guys like AFB and stuff to kick back. You're like, oh, bros, you has got this. And then he's got more energy for defense. Um, it gives everyone a bit more of a break. Whereas to a picky, yeah, he's, he's evading tackles, but he's not really going anywhere. And then he gets grabbed, put on his back, slow play the ball. What, the way the Warriors play, they definitely need a big, strong guy in there. I don't care. Everyone's like, should they put keep Roger there or put CNK there? I don't care. Just eat what, as long as one of them is. I personally would put CNK back there just because I think Roger was fine at centre. And I think I actually think Roger will get more better ball with CNK than, he ha- than Roger had been getting in the previous games this year because CNK will get them off to a good start. Montoya... Montoya, DWZ, you know, Roger, spin, just heaps better. So Warriors, to me, looked a lot better. No, it wasn't great. It wasn't pretty. But um, I still liked it. I still thought I thought AFB was good. And Warriors are so much better with Wade Egan on the field. He's just, he's on another level. He's he's up, he's in the, he's at the top of the pyramid when it comes to, to hookers. I'm not saying he's the top of the pyramid, but he's at the in the top. Like, he's, someone said it in telecast, I don't remember who it was, but they said, what Wade Egan is like he is a hooker like some a lot of you know like for example Phoenix Coxon actually isn't a hooker he's a half that's playing hooker you know a lot of people sort of get put in that position a lot of hybrids Wade Egan's a hooker you know just like Harry Grant is a hooker like you can't put you know if you're picking a rep team you couldn't go oh I reckon uh, Harry Grant can play on the in the centers or second rep nah he's a, he's a hooker <laughs> like that's that's all he can play that's what he's good at um but yeah, I thought Kurt Catewell had one of his better games. Tom Ford was solid. Nakora came on, brought some nice spark. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's that's the way it's got to go. This is how the teams. And I thought uh, Chanel Tavita Harris came on and was pretty good because Luke Metcalf broke his leg, or well, apparently a fracture in his leg as well. So um, now look, problems with the Knights. Unfortunately, Janko and Tuala had his best game, but his best game. It's probably Dom Young's worst game from last year. It's just they've just lost so much there. Like they said it in the telecast, Dom Young scored 25 tries, I think, last year. I'd say 10 of those were tries that not many other wingers could have scored. Like he was dead set, burning dudes for pace and doing the hecticest finishes at the end. Like him and DWZ were the two best finishers last year. Dom Young was scoring tries last year, not many other wingers in the comp score. And I was sitting there going... 25 tries out of 24 games. That's that's six points they're missing every game with him gone because just about every try he scored was almost, you know, like not many other try guys would score there. And yeah, it was it's it's a big hole, man. He's lost, and then now they've lost the meters from Marju as well. So they're missing 200 me- no 400 meters to go for just about with Marju and Dom Young. <sighs> yeah, it's just like. That that was the big difference for me. So, so Knights kick the ball down to the Warriors. RTS, DWZ, Montoya, bang, 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 just pumping through the middle, getting their sets rolling. Warriors kick down to the Knights. Kalen Ponga dance, get pulled. Kalen Ponga was brilliant, by the way, but I'm talking about most of the time. Pulled down, put on his back, held down onto Jenkins, gets swarmed, gets pushed back on the ground. Next Tuala, he had a pretty good game. Like he had a couple good carries, but more often than not, it was like three, three really good plays for the Warriors and three sort of average ones from the Knights, and that was sort of the difference for me. Um, they really couldn't get their sets going. Um, was, Frizzell was great, but I was pretty disappointed with their forwards. Uh, break break. Right? <laughs> Jaden Braley, sorry, um, came on and looked pretty nice. Um, but, yeah, it was just... Knights are in trouble, man. Knights are in big, big trouble. They don't look horrible, but there's just something missing there. Well, I know what it is. It's two. It's Greg Marju and uh, Dom Young. Jesus. That's um, big holes. I, I, I said that. Like Normally when a winger leaves a club, you, you, whatever. But that I don't think people realise what he was doing for the Knights last year. Like, it was... Pretty damn special. Kalen Pong, I'm telling you what, if Kalen Ponga was not in this team, or if Kalen Ponga just had a 6 out of 10 game in this, it, this would have been 30 nil. Yeah, seriously, like, 169 running metres, 
36 post contact, two line breaks, two line break assists, try assists, seven tackle breaks, and just absolutely murdered it. Had him as captain with my super coach team too, so thanks for that, Kayla. Uh, DW, uh, so, whoops. Um, yeah, but it was, like I said, there's not... Bradman Best actually stepped up pretty good. And like I said, Tuala actually had a pretty damn solid game. It was one of his better ones, but um, I'm pretty sure there was... Yeah, he had two line breaks to get that, 228. So that's embellished a little bit, but still really, really solid. He was really good. Um, mm, not sure in trouble. Who have Knights got next week? Where are they? Shit, they're way down here. Dragons. Oh, it's going to be a tough one to pick. <sighs> It's going to be a real tough one to pick. Where are we? Where are we? All the way down here. But yeah, it's a, it's a mucky one. All right, so have a look at some of the team stats, guys. So 88% to 86. Shout out to the Warriors, too. Another sellout. Um, actually, I just wanted to give the Broncos fans a shout out, too. So I was chatting to the media manager. Um, so it was, they weren't allowed to call it a sellout because apparently they had a bunch of what flexi tickets and a bunch of flexi people didn't come. Um, but it was just under 50,000, but there were no tickets available. So it was a sellout, but just, uh, there was all these weird rules about being able to call things sellouts. Um, but there were no tickets available. And um, 40, 48,000, 49,000 or whatever it was, and it was pissing down rain and all the seats were full. It was, it was awesome. So shout out to the Broncos fans. Queensland is normally, when it's even drizzles, they don't go out and do stuff. So shout out to the Broncos fans. Um, post contact, pretty similar. What else we got here? Warriors won the average set distance. Definitely won the fast to play the balls. Won the contact too. DWZ, absolutely brilliant. Look at that tackle efficiency too. Pretty good from both teams to be fair. Both teams under 30 missed tackles, so that's good. Can't complain there. 10 errors to 8. Now, this is the little problem I have with the Warriors at the moment. I feel like Warriors are almost playing a little too disciplined. Like, let's see if there's an offload here. I bet there wasn't. Where is it? Offload. Nine! When did they do those? All right. Massive L take there, Snag. No, but... um. I just felt like Parramatta today too, so we're about to get to that game. I just felt when the game was a little close, I don't know, I just felt like felt like an offload or two out the back. There was definitely offloads on and they just didn't take them. I felt like, and that's how I felt like, like bro, AFB, boom, spin, spin uh, Roger. I, I just felt like that was on. Like, I don't, I don't think the Knights would have been able to defend that. Like a skittled line. With Roger, I just felt like it was a little too safe. I felt like they could have chanced their arm just a little bit because this game was in the balance. Like, Knights weren't that far away. I felt like they could have blown this their way without being too risky. Just a, good, a couple nice offloads at nice times. These must have happened at the end of the game because, I, I mean, at the start of the game because I remember towards the end there, I was just like, I, I felt like they weren't going to go around the Knights and then I just felt like, yeah, I just felt like there was definitely an off a, a way to break through the middle. You got RTS there, you got AFB there. I just was like, oh, come on, man, come on, where's the offload, bro? I don't think this would have been AFB offloading. It must have, must have been a few at the start or something because yeah, I just felt like there was. Like there, there's been a few games now, like Melbourne, like a few game, like the few games they've won even that they lost the Melbourne one. Who they play the week before? Oh, who cares? But you know they were in that game too. You know what I mean? I just felt like, oh man, like they're not really putting teams away here. So, but it's dubs dub, and they took it. They took it. Sharks Raiders. Man, I was so pissed off at this game. So my punt, I put Raiders with a six and a half point head start. They blitz out to an eighteen point lead. So essentially, for my punt, twenty five points. I'm I'm up twenty five points. <laughs> But like, how did this lose? Like, what did they do? I swear Ricky must saw my punt and been like, yeah, that's a mess this guy's uh, punt up. He's, you know, he's done a nice punt there. And let, let's mess this thing up because this was disgusting, bro. Like, they just faded. Like, I've never seen a team fade before. And it was, even when the, it was just like, I was just like, they were begging for half time. 
I was like, maybe they can turn it. They got back to 18 all. So Raiders shoot out to 18 nil. Sharkies bring it back to 18 all at half time. I'm like, maybe they'll get back and Ricky will give them a rev up and they'll come out. No, they looked just as they looked out on their feet in the first 10 minutes of the. They just Sharks just scored whenever they felt like it. Almost it was so bad. It was absolutely awful, and I do want to give Ricky a shout out for spraying his players. I feel like sometimes, like, like you can put an arm around them, but you got to let them know sometimes when it's not good. Like, that was not good enough, bro. But like, that's that's not good enough, man. Like, one thing that does irk me a little bit is sometimes when someone does something stupid and they're like high fiving after. I'm like, bro, like get into him. That's stupid, bro. Don't do it. I remember. Um, all the good players used to do it, like Matt, Matt, like Andrew Johns used to spray, spray his players. Like it doesn't mean you hate each other, and I know you want to reinforce positivity when it's time. But remember when Rudd Radra went to offload, went playing for Australia, and it knocked on, and JT went up to big Sammy Rudd Radra and just sprayed him and was like, "Don't you ever offload in that situation ever again," and was screaming at him in his face. You know, like sometimes you need that. You know, if you if you mess up and someone tells you, "Oh, good, it's all good, man, we'll defend this." Nah, bro, got to be sprayed sometimes. And I really like that Ricky sort of got into the boys a little bit. Because um, they, they had to be better. Like, they should not have lost that. 18-0 up. Okay, 18-0 up. Let's say they do lose the game 26 to 24. They got blitzed. They got blitzed. They end up leaking 36 points. It's just not good enough. Hopefully, Sharkies can just throw... I mean, Raiders can just throw that in the bin. Because they've been, they've been good, man. Like, where are they sitting now? Still sitting in 8th, 2-2, two and two. got Parramatta next week, coming off a bye, uh, coming off a loss as well, sorry, so yeah, that's going to be a tough round next weekend, just just saying, um, who was, I thought Will Kennedy was a little dodgy early, but looked pretty nice, Brandon Trindle was awesome, Nico Hines was awesome with the boot, um, now, this was funny, because I, I was sitting there, right? So when, when Raiders went up 18-0, I'm sitting there going, oh, this is locked. Not just because of the score, but also Hazleton and Oregon Kafusi. I thought we were getting blitzed. And then what I thought was going to happen here, because Sharks had lost so many forwards, I was like, well, when Hazleton and Kafusi go off for their first spell, you know what I mean? they got like guys like um, Mariotta, Sola and Horsburgh coming on, and these guys here aren't going to be able to handle them. It's the complete opposite. When these guys came on, this kid here, what's his name again? Who I... Oh, I can't even say his name. This dude skittled. Like, they just... That's when the game turned. I was like, what the hell's going on here, man? Like... And then Hazleton and Kafusi came back on, and it was, it was just over. It was just... I couldn't believe it. I was so shattered. I, I was just... That happened to me quite a bit this weekend. I thought... Um, Thought I had something locked down, and then it just didn't come good. Trindle, I thought was great, best game of the year. Um, what do you go for? Um, line break, line break assist, try assist. Nico Hines as well, uh, line break, try assist. But yeah, this was crazy. 152 running meters from Nico Hines. That's brilliant. I uh, didn't mind Talakai in the in the second row, but I definitely like him better at center. Um, but yeah, they did what they had to do, man. Sharkies were looking pretty dodgy for me. So, uh, Jordan Rabana, I just, I mean, I, I've been giving him raps all year because he's been, he looked so good. But yeah, he's just, he's just not a fullback. He's not a traditional fullback. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm not going to write him off. I'm not going to say, now you have to change it. It's not good enough. But I don't know if they're going to go deep with him. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Savage. Savage man, just I'd savage let him back into this game, just jogging back off that bad kick, and then just the try gets leaked, and they score two tries in two minutes, and yeah, that was bad, man. But anyway, what do you do? What do you do, lads? Let's have a look at these stats. So completion rate seventy nine to seventy five percent. Sharkies won the middle. We thought the middle was going to get skittled. They ended up winning, you know. Yeah. Uh, Tackle breaks, 27-23. Average set distance, look at that. They absolutely pumped them. 41-33. to 33. And what else we got here? Nice 40-20, that was good too. Both tackled around 89%. Errors, 11-12. to 12. Yeah, that's that's real bad performance from the from the Raiders. I was so disappointed with them. I was just so disappointed because I, I thought they were going to win outright, but I'm like, I'll give them a little head start, and then they do that to me. Parramatta. What's the matter, Parramatta? 
this game was today. Um, so we hit these two. We had these two for two more, actually, which is pretty good. But then not in the same bet. I had Parramatta minus three and a half, uh, which I went minus one and a half. I mean, plus one and a half. <laughs> Oh, Justin Ollum looks so good, man. Tries to Buller and Justin Ollum. Um, Clint Gutherson tried his ass off. Mika Sivo was cramping up as his first game back, even though he got a try. Will Pessini, I loved that battle between Will Pessini and Justin Ollum. That was such a good... It's like the new young jukebox versus the, versus the old vet. Now, they, they were talking this game up. Blaze Talangi, next big thing, versus Lockie Galvin. Lockie Galvin sizzled him, took him for a ride, absolutely gave him a bath. And um, look, Parramatta win this if Mitchell Moses is in the team. I mean, with possession 53%, so it evened up a bit at the end. But they had 60-40 for most of this game. Mitchell Moses would have come up with a couple of things that, you know, wouldn't be able to defend. And... It was funny, I was like, people were like, oh, Mitch, he's a big loss. I'm like, he's not as big a loss as you think. Like, Mitch, Dill Brown's no slouch. But the difference for me, Tigers have 10 in the bin. Have Lucky Galvin 10 in the bin. They're up 14 to 6. Parramatta have the ball. Third or fourth tackle coming out of their own end. Shift it left. And then Dylan Brown tries to do a tap on to a winger in their own end. I'm just like, Mitchell Moses would never do something so stupid. And that's that's when you do need that vet half back in. That just, sometimes they might do something, you don't even think about it. But a young player that's full of, you know, confidence and all that stuff does that stupid thing. Like I saw I saw at, at Caesar today, he, he just he sort of went to the thing and he could have passed. Would have been a hospital pass, possibly an error. He just got tackled. And you, you don't think anything about that play. But him just not passing that ball, his, his old vet, smart halfback move. And then you've got Dylan Brown on the other end trying to do tap-on passes in his own end when they've got a man in the bin when you're winning the game. Stupid. Absolutely stupid. So, And he knew it straight away. It was just, just an idiotic thing to do. But, you know, that's why we love them too. That's why we love these young, exciting guys. But... Yeah, not not good enough, man. From Dillbags, um, I thought he was brilliant. He nearly broke the line every time he took a carry. Um, but yeah, he's got to be better there. Um, let's have a look at some of these stats. Uh, Parramatta won the middle. Oh, this is the other thing too. Uh, sorry, just before we get onto this. So Parramatta have been starting Junior Paulo on the bench, and obviously Hopgood would normally start. He makes it why. I mean, I love... I think Brad Arthur gets a bit of a bum rap sometimes, but that was a master stroke and looked so good. And then he completely changed it up this time, brought Ryan Madison on and Junior Paulo on to start. When Brian... Like... I was just sitting there going, well, why? Like, what are you doing? And, and the way that... If you just watch this game, right? The first 10 minutes, like... It's not hard to hold your own. Like, Tigers end up scoring a try anyway. Like... Where this game, I think, would have been won if he had used his old strategy is that try probably would have been scored whether Junior Paulo's on the park or not. You know what I mean? This one here, what, three minutes into the game? It was just like... That, so they, he brought it on to have a fast, strong start and then they didn't have one anyway. So you've played your you played your trump card, bringing on all your, your, your best middles and you're down anyway. And then as the game went on, Junior Paulo has to come off in around halfway through half to, um, the first half, and now you've lost your fizz. It was just it was just bizarre to me, man. I, I genuinely think if he just kept the same thing, hop good in the middle, um, Joe Offran Gowie starting, and he brought him on with twenty minutes to go. That's when Parramatta had all the ball as well. So Parramatta would have had all the ball, fresh Junior Paulo, fresh Ryan Madison, blasting through the middle, offloading at will against a tired Tigers team. I think they would have blown the game open. So to me, this is a massive L from Brad Arthur. Um, it just it just didn't work. Like fair cop. Like maybe he saw something there and just thought, man, we might get skittled through the middle. We well, did anyway. Like Tigers, Tigers were won, Tigers won the ruck the first ten minutes and scored a try. So you may as well do that and at least have have your good players come on in ten minutes time. So yeah, it was a um, bit pretty big L from from Brad Arthur in my opinion. That that wasn't smart. I mean, Joe Frank Gow, he can hold his own. He's his best prop in the game. Nah, he's big, he's strong, he's physical, he's been there, he's done that. 
he can he, he can he can tackle David Clemmer, bro. Like yeah, so big L there. Um, but shout out to the Tigers. Don't take anything away from them. I just think there's so many scenarios where Parramatta win this game comfortably, and it was just sort of every wrong thing that sort of went on in this game. But not taking anything away from Tigers, like they were, they were really good. It was just they were pretty good. They weren't, they weren't incredible or anything. But yeah, it was just there was just things that were clearly visible, like Nathan um, Dylan Brown doing that tap on pass, just just silly things that Parramatta hadn't been doing in the first three weeks, and then just starting Junior Paulo when coming him off the bench had just been a revelation. So anyway, it's all good. Shout out to the Tigers, good win. Um, yeah, but Parramatta won, run the metres battle here, one post contact, four line breaks each, 29 tackle breaks as well, so they won that as well. Um, average set distance, they won that. Um, Tigers were playing the ball a bit quicker. It's just Clint Gutherson and Mikasevo need to find a faster play of the ball, seriously. Just land on the ground, just get up and play it, mate. Like Clint, I feel like Clint's just playing for penalties or something. Just just get up as quick as you can and play it. If you get a penalty, great. If you don't, at least you get a faster play of the ball. Uh, off, this is the other thing about Parramatta as well, which I do have a problem with. They look their best when they're offloading. I'm not saying playing stupid, but offloading. In a close game, obviously you don't want to be doing offloads as much. So if it is a close game, I feel like, how do you win? Your best foot is when you're offloading, and then you're like, oh man, it's 16 all with five minutes to go. I don't want to throw this offload. But that's how you've been getting all your success in the game. <laughs> really takes it away. Um, so 13 offloads to 8. Kick diffuse as well. I don't know. <laughs> Kick diffuse was 125%. Uh, both tackled at 87. 13 errors from Parramatta. Yeah. Just not good enough to 10. Penalties conceded 10 to 3. God damn. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I haven't had a look at these stats yet. And Clint Gutherson actually had a kick to... Well, this, this is what I say. If Mitchell Moses was in the game, he definitely would have. Well, yeah, they would have won because Mitch Moses wouldn't have missed that kick either. But um, what do we got? So Clint I thought Clint was pretty good. 165 metres. Um, Mick Acebo, 133. He was breaking down with cramps at the end there. Um, I thought RCG was just running his ass off, but... I mean, Junior Paulo, I mean, he came on, he gave you 85 metres, bro. You know what I mean? It was just, he just looks so good. Just just because you're a bench player doesn't mean you're not as, not a, <laughs> I've said this before, a good bench player is almost more valuable than having a lot of your starters sometimes. Um... Hopgood was solid when he came on, but a couple dumb errors. And I thought the Tigers did such a good job of shutting down Sean Lane. Jesus Christ. But yeah, Clint was good. Like, one line break, line break assist, try assist, th what was that, three tackle breaks. Um, yeah, anyway. Parramatta got some work to do, man. They're saying Mitchell Moses is going to be out for up to six to 12 weeks. I reckon it'll be six. I don't see a fracture being that long. Like, like, a, a cot, like, who was it? Bloody. Cam Munster had a compound fracture. His bone was sticking out of his finger. And he had three weeks. You know what I mean? I don't see a little compound... like That's a compound fracture, so it's sticking out of the skin. I don't see a small hairline fracture on your foot keeping you out for 12 weeks. And it's such a big window. Like I don't know. I reckon it's going to be six. I reckon it's going to come in around origin time. Um, but yeah, so who was good from the Tigers? Drain Buller was good. I love the way he sniffs around the ruck there. Just like a good... A good young fullback should do, you know, like um, 152 meters, nice. I thought Olam was great. He was looking to murder people. Lockie Galvin, Lockie Galvin was brilliant. Adam Caesar, everyone was rapping him. He had a few dud kicks, but he was very good. He kicked the field goal as well. Stefano's first stint was incredible. Um, Abby Corrissey was just a freak, bro, absolute freak. Um, but yeah, really good for Tigers. Tigers are not an easy beat team this year. Like, you can just tell in their body language they've got a good roster. They're going to lose plenty of games. Like, you know what I mean? They just are. Like, because they're not super stacked and they've still got a lot of um, youth in key positions and stuff like that. But 
You know what I mean? They're going to grind out wins like this, and they're going to they're going to beat some pretty good teams this year. They're still going to lose plenty, but you can't. You used to like the last three years. If you're a if you're a top eight team, and you're going to Leichhardt or wherever, you 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 knew you were getting the two points if if you just played okay. That's not okay. That's not the case anymore. They they could beat any team on their day. Um, if you if you don't hold the ball and they do and they play really good, you you could be in trouble, sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, they look really, really nice. Super, super happy for the for the Tigers. Super happy for the Tigers. And that's it. Let's have a look at next week's game scores. No, it's not the draw. Week five. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, Bronco Storm. Man, it's going to be a tough one, man. Is Munster back? That's the question. That's the question. Is Reese back? He's been training. Uh, Bulldogs versus the Roosters. Knights versus the Dragons. That's going to be... Jesus, this week's going to be tough for tipping. We've got the Bunnies versus the Warriors in Sydney. Seagulls versus the Panthers. The first place Dolphins versus the sixth place West Tigers. Never thought I'd be saying that. Never thought those words would come out of my mouth. Not going to lie. Good on both of you. Cowboys versus the Titans. In Townsville. <coughs> Raiders versus the Eels. Jesus, this is going to be another tough weekend of tipping. It's going to be another tough weekend of tipping. I'm telling you. Well, well, that's going to be tough. Anyway, that's it, lads. Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.